Welcome back. My name is Aria and I'm a research analyst at FinChat. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a demo on some best practices when it comes down to tracking your portfolio on FinChat on our dashboard feature. And so what you're going to want to do is navigate over to the FinChat website. And right away, it's one of the first things that you'll see over on our landing page. Of course, you could search for a business to go into the analysis tab. But for now, we're just going to click right into the dashboard and it'll take us there. And actually, before we get started, I wanted to say that if you click the link in the description down below, you could get two weeks of our highest tier FinChat Pro subscription completely for free and there's no card details required. We automatically just apply the free trial to your account once you sign up. And so if this is your first time using FinChat, you'll probably be given a default dashboard with just the biggest market cap businesses in the world. But assuming you want to track your own portfolio, you could do so using the new dashboard button in the bottom left. And then right away, you could start adding some companies into your portfolio. So just for the sake of today's demo, I'm going to click on a couple big tech names. So for example, we'll put in Apple. I'm also going to put in Nvidia, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and then we'll do a couple different ones as well. So for example, we'll, we'll do Netflix, Shopify, let's do ASML. And uh, by the way, if you click over on the listings part here, you'll be able to uh, look at all the different listings. So uh, for some of you, maybe uh, in, in Europe, you'll own it in a different currency. You'll be able to put, for example, the uh, German listed version of ASML. But for now, I'm just going to put the NASDAQ listed one. And so with that being said, you'll see that once you put your stocks into the dashboard, you're already given a handful of different metrics, such as the market cap, the daily percentage change, a couple of growth metrics, the forward PE of all the different companies, and additionally, the operating margins. And to kind of view these, you'll want to uh, scroll to the side. And again, you'll see that, for example, Apple right now is trading at a 30 forward PE. It's a very quick way of being able to look at uh, where your businesses are trading in terms of valuation or how fast their trailing growth is and easily be able to compare. So right away, I'm able to see, for example, that NVIDIA over the past five years has drastically grown faster than Apple. And this is highly customizable, by the way. So if you're someone that wants to track uh, forward growth as opposed to trailing growth, you could do that. If you navigate over to the search metrics dropdown, you'll be able to search for, for example, forward revenue growth, and you're given a handful of different options. And this is based off of analyst projected revenue growth. So for simplicity's sake, let's just do the next year. And you'll see that it populates that over on the right hand side. And we can see that over the next year, Apple is expected to grow revenues by 5% and Nvidia is expected to grow revenues by 112%. Now let's just say that you wanted to prioritize this metric over all the other metrics and you could simply move it by holding onto the six dots and bringing it over. Additionally, another way that you could bring it further up is if you get rid of the metrics that you may not look at as frequently or are unimportant to you. So for example, total enterprise value, uh, these aforementioned growth metrics. And so all of a sudden it's highlighted just a bit more. Now, in terms of actually tracking your portfolio, it's quite simple. What you wanna do is you wanna put your share count under this column. And so I'm gonna quickly do that and then come back to you once that's filled. And just like that, I filled out all the different share counts and you'll see that a couple different columns have started to populate here. First and foremost, you have your market value in US dollars. And so this shows you exactly what that is. It's how much your stocks are worth, the entire position is worth. And then at the bottom, it gives you the total portfolio amount. So in this case, it's just shy of 20,000 American dollars. And then additionally, you could also see the percentage of your portfolio, which these stocks are making up. So in the case of Apple, again, it's just shy of 14%. Microsoft is a little over 10. Alphabet, just over 14, so on and so forth. Now, another tab that you could fill out here is the average cost basis. Of course, you want to track how much in gains you've made over time. So I'm going to quickly fill that out and get back to you. And so as you can see, I filled out the average cost basis. Again, I just did this at random, but you'll see that another tab that has started to populate is the percentage change. And what this shows is effectively how much in gains you've made on these positions based off your cost basis. So we'll see that like, for example, the only losers that we have are Microsoft and Google. And then our biggest gainer is by far Netflix at over 370% in gains. And then additionally, if you just click on these metrics, it'll sort by highest to lowest. And then if you click on it again, it'll sort by lowest to highest. The same goes for percentage change to see which are your biggest gainers. The same goes for uh, percentage of portfolio to see which one is your biggest holdings and which one is your smallest, so on and so forth. It works for growth rate, works for uh, operating margins, PE, so on and so forth. And then let's just say you're someone that would like to share your portfolio or for whatever other reason would like to hide the ownership. You could do so by clicking this button. And what that does is it hides both the market value column and the number of shares which you own. What's well, important to note that your average cost basis is still there and you could turn that off if you wish to do so as well. 
but I'm gonna turn those back on for now. Now let's just say that you have some cash in your portfolio that you'd also like to track. You could do that by clicking the add cash button and it automatically loads an individual holding at the bottom for you. So you could input however much cash you have. And what's cool about this is that you can actually change the currency to whatever it is that you're holding. So for example, if we just change it to Canadian, you can start tracking how much capital you have in Canadian dollars and it auto converts it to American to show you the American amount that you have. But let's just say that you wanted to know how much your portfolio is worth again in Canadian dollars. What you could do is click on the CAD button from the drop down in the top left and now it shows you your portfolio worth in Canadian dollars. Let's just say you wanted to look at it in the Korean won. Again, just simply clicking that from the drop down, it'll automatically convert it for you. But what's interesting to note is that your cash position is still in CAD. So what you can do is if you, for example, have capital sitting cash in American dollars, you could track it in American dollars, but have it auto convert to the Korean won so that you could see how much money you have in Korean won. And let's just say you have multiple cash positions and you have some money in Australian dollars, for example. You could also input that and it auto converts to the Korean won or whatever other currency is native to your country. Now scrolling down, I think this is where the dashboard feature really shines. While the columns above do provide value to kind of look through and compare between holdings, what many investors manually have to do and spend hours and hours of their time is trying to calculate the weighted average metrics for their portfolios. And this is something that I've personally wasted hours of my time on as well. And so what you have here on the left hand side is the portfolio statistics. Now it's the same 20,000 metrics that were available to you a second ago, but instead what it does is it calculates the weighted average of your portfolio. And so we'll see in this mock portfolio that I've built here, the weighted average operating margins stands very strongly at 31%. The forward PE of this portfolio is quite expensive at 38 times next year's earnings and the trailing three year revenue growth sits at 19%. Now, of course, again, you're not limited to just using these metrics that are already in place for you. And actually, I'm gonna get rid of a couple of these that I don't think are as important. For example, if we wanna bring in the uh, one year forward revenue growth rate, you have that available to you. If you wanted to look at specifically free cash flow margins, you can bring that up as well. You can even bring up the, for example, five year free cash flow margin average. Uh, you can also bring up a free cash flow growth rate. And we want this uh, on a forward basis. And just to change things up, I'm gonna do a three year forward Kager. So you can see that on average, this portfolio is projected to grow their free cash flow at 30% for the next three years. And one thing to note with this, you can click the download button here to share your portfolio pie chart and you can also add titles. So for example, you could add the date, February 9th, 2025 or whatever the case is. Or if your portfolio has a certain name, you can add that as well. And at last, if we scroll down here, you'll see that you can also view the industry breakdown of your portfolio. So right away we could spot that we have a relatively small weighting uh, towards software companies and we're massively overweight in terms of semiconductors in this mock portfolio. You also have the geography breakdown on the right hand side of your screen. And so again, right away we could spot that there's a massive tilt towards US businesses. ASML is the only company from Holland and Shopify is our only Canadian business that we have in the portfolio. You can also click on download to again, share these pie charts with others. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Feel free to reach out to us through our help center if you have any questions or concerns, which can be found under the settings icon on the left-hand side of your screen. Have a great day.